If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. And I want to share with you tonight three lies of the devil. Okay, three lies of, lies of the devil. And uh, the Bible tells us that the devil is a liar. And lie number one, sin will not hurt you. Sin will not hurt you. That is a lie. Number two, you will not die. That is another lie. And number three, it's not your fault. It's not your fault. And uh, I heard a man preach. I think it was Sonny Holland, if I remember right. And he tied these three things uh, with uh, three knots in the devil's tail. I thought that was an interesting way of putting something. So, uh, you know, the, the three knots there uh, is the, it, you know, sin will not hurt you. You will not die. And it's not your fault. I'm going to start out at uh, John chapter 8. Uh, John eight forty four, and it's talking about uh, Satan and him being a liar. Verse forty four says, uh, "Let's see, you are of your father, the devil." And again, this is Jesus speaking, and the desires of your father you want to do. And it says he was a murderer from the beginning, and does not stand in truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of lies. And of course, we are talking here about the fall in the garden in Genesis 3, and, and this is where uh, you know mankind has fallen, and he just bold-faced lied uh, to Adam and Eve. The second thing I want you to see before we get started, the devil has three purposes Okay, three purposes. Look in John 10. You just have to flip a page over. John 10, 10. The thief does not come except to kill, steal, and destroy. And it says, I have come that they may have life and that they have more abundantly. The thief to steal, he, uh, he tries to steal peace in your life. And another thing he kills he kills the joy, all right? He doesn't want you to have joy in your life. And another thing, uh, you have to uh, destroy, and his goal is to destroy your testimony. So we can look at these three things about the devil and his purposes. So let's look at lie, lie number one, Genesis 3, 1. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And again, folks, I, I'm just telling you, uh, uh, the word cunning is sneaky, is a good word for that. He wants right to be wrong and wrong right. He wants to trip you up. He wants you to believe his lies. And then it says, and he said to the woman, has God indeed said, you shall not eat from every tree of the garden? So, what he does is he put doubts in Adam and Eve's life, okay? And another thing that he does, he misquotes Scripture, and you will see that uh, in several places uh, in uh, the, the Bible. And then it says, uh, has God truly done that? You should not eat of every tree of the garden. Uh, Genesis 2, look at Genesis 2, uh, verse uh, 15. Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to, uh, to tend and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man saying, of every tree of the garden you can freely eat, but of the tree of uh, knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it you shall die. So God, when he put Adam and Eve in there, said basically there's just one rule here, okay? You cannot eat of this tree. And what does Satan do first? He tempts them. All right? He tempts them with, you know, did God really say that? Did God really mean that? And listen, folks, uh, God means everything he says. The Ten Commandments are the Ten Commandments. When you see the Word of God, thus saith the Lord. 
And Satan likes to twist words. He wants to twist situations. He wants to plant seeds of doubt in your life. So we have to be on, on, on guard. And, and folks, uh, sin does hurt us. Okay, we need to understand that. Uh, sin will pull you down. Sin is the reason. I mean, Adam and Eve started the whole thing. And some people just say, well, you know, uh, it, and, and here's what I believe, folks. Uh, you know, we would, we would have done the same thing probably in this situation. What I'm saying is we can't blame our sin on Adam and Eve. All right? The fall happened, and, and Satan uh, just basically lied to them about that. Number two, sin will not hurt you. Two, you will not die. Look at verse two. And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest ye die. Okay? Did you even notice she added a word there? She added, you're not even supposed to touch it. Okay? So it was there. God had the rule. She could quote the rule. All right? But yet Satan stayed after her. And by the way, I, if I were you, I wouldn't have a conversation with Satan too long if I were you. <laughs> okay? Because I'm telling you, the long you talk to him, and, and again, I believe in rebuking Satan. There are many times thoughts come into my head, and I say, Satan, get out of my head. There's nothing wrong with that. But we're talking about a conversation here, all right? Folks, we need to converse with God and Jesus, all right? So this conversation is going on. Verse 4, and then the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die. Now, here's, here's the, the catch. Verse 5, for God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Ooh, man, you talk about a lie. That is a bold-faced lie, all right? God never said that. That is not going to happen. We will never be like God. Now we get to heaven and we will be perfect. But folks, there's only one God. That's Jehovah God of this Bible. And I praise God that he is in control of all things. Folks, I am telling you, you can look at the, uh, the book of Job when that conversation was going on. And, and Job right at the first said, hey, I'm, God, I mean, the devil said uh, to God, hey, if you'll just take your hand off him, he'll curse you. And, and Job, I'm just telling you, he didn't do it, all right? He stayed strong in what he, uh, what he believed. And so we have to understand that God is still in control. Matter of fact, if you remember, the only rule that he had on that deal is you can't kill him. I am telling you, Satan would kill every Christian if, if he could do it. Everyone, he don't want us here on earth. He don't want us making uh, a difference in our society. He don't want us witnessing uh, to people, all right? So the big lie was you will not die. And we certainly, you know, again, when we get to heaven, I understand all that, but in no way and form are we like God. Uh, James chapter 1. Look at James 1 with me. James chapter 1, verse 13. The Bible says, Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. God never tempts you. He will test you. He will try you. All right? But he will never put sin in front of you uh, and, and dangle it like Satan does. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. That's pretty plain, folks. It's not him. If that voice in your head and it's going against the word of God, all right, then it is not, I mean, it's not God, all right? If, you know, the Bible, that's why we have the Bible. That's why we know. That's why we have the Holy Spirit, so that it can be our guide. And then it says, verse 14, but each, but each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Satan lures you into things. Okay, 
It's just like if I was to go fishing and I just get my rod and reel and I put a cork on it and I put a hook on it and I just chunk it out in the water. I'm not going to catch a stinking thing. But if I put a minnow, a live minnow out there, I'm telling you, my son the other night was out at the pond there, uh, you know, uh, you know, and, and uh, he caught a huge catfish on a minnow. Why? Because that catfish wanted a minnow. All right? And that's what Satan does. He tempts us. He lures us. He tells us that sin is okay, and it's not okay. Verse 15, then when the desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and when sin uh, is full grown, it brings forth death. And again, you have to understand when it's talking about death, it doesn't necessarily mean, uh, you know, you know, physical death, but I will say there are things and there are sins that have caused people to die. You, you drunk, you're drunk and you get in a car and, and you kill somebody like that. I'm telling you, that's exactly what happened, but you are the one that chose to drink. You can't blame that on anyone else. All right. And <clears throat> really folks, we are, we all, matter of fact, uh, the Bible says in Hebrews 9.27, Hebrews 9.27, it's just back a few chapters, as it is appointed for men once to die once, but after that, the judgment. Oh, listen, folks, we're all going to stand before God. Everybody, all right? Satan has already been judged. Satan has already been condemned. I know he is running around crazy right now, but I'm just telling you, uh, we know he will be bound for the thousand years. And after that, he will be cast into hell. And folks, we all are going to die if God tarries. And by the way, with everything that's going on in Israel right now, I'm telling you, my spiritual bags are packed. Okay, I believe with all my heart, he could come any day now. God could come any day now. I mean, it's all lining up. Had a lady call me today and just all worried about it. I said, what you, why are you worrying about this? This is exactly what we taught in Revelation. This is exactly what the Bible says. And I'm not saying he's coming today. I'm simply saying, folks, it is getting close. I believe with all my heart. My spiritual barometer is just saying, hey, all this is happening for a reason. So we see sin will hurt you. And you will die. And folks, I'm not trying to be negative about that. I'm simply saying we need to make preparation for that. We need to know that we know that we know that when we die, we're going to spend an eternity with Christ. The third lie, it, and this one is the big one. It's not your fault. I'm just, I'm just amazed that people, and, and folks, I, 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 I run into these people more than I want to run into them. They have lied so much that they actually believe that their lie is the truth. And I am telling you, you can't convince them otherwise. When I get a chance, I call their hand on it. I really do. And, and look, look at this process. Number three, it's not your fault. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and the tree was desirable to make one wise. I mean, look at the list of things. Hey, it's food. It's pleasant. It looks great. And I'm going to be wise. Satan lied, told, him, told her all this. She took of his fruit and ate, and she gave it to her husband with her, and he ate. And again, you know, you can't, one before the other, it could have been flipped Okay, it could have been Adam first. It doesn't really matter. They both ate of the apple, and they both uh, sinned against God. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew <clears throat> that they were naked, and they sewed uh, fig leaves together and made themselves covering. And again, their eyes were open. Uh, you know, they saw things from a totally different perspective. Isn't that some, sometimes uh, the re reverse of salvation? Man, we, we didn't know what we were doing. We were in darkness. And man, God opened our eyes and we got saved. Well, folks, 
at the fall, it was exactly opposite. And, and they knew, and, and, you know, sowing the leaves together. I mean, they've been living together in the garden and all at once now they need leaves. Why, why are they covering up? And, and you can just see this progression of bad decisions. Verse eight, and they heard the sound of the Lord, uh, God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord among the trees in the garden. Is that not hilarious? You're going to go hide behind a tree and think God can't see you. I mean, that, that's insane, folks. We're talking about God here. Our, God sees through trees, folks. He sees through walls. All right, Jesus walked through walls. So that's not going to help a thing. Then the Lord God called to Adam and said, where are you? Which I think I, this is why I know God has a sense of humor. He knew exactly where they were, but yet he's going on with them. All right. They're thinking they're hiding. And so he just says, where are y'all? So he said, I heard your voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. I know the first question is, he had never felt being afraid before. Don't you have to understand that the Garden of Eden, Eden was a perfect place? Okay? No, no rose bushes, no stickers. Okay? Uh, no pollution. All right? The water there was pure. All these things were perfect. And because of their choice, all this sin comes into the world. All of it. All right? Death came into the world because of the fall. And it says, I was naked, I hid myself. And he said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree which I commanded uh, you that you should not eat? So God's questioning him. God already knows the answer. He just wanted to know if he was going to tell the truth or not. Folks, have you eaten from the tree? And the man said, the woman whom you gave to me, she gave it to me uh, of the tree, and I ate. Here's the blame game. All right? It's almost if Adam was saying, you know, I wasn't doing too bad in the garden by myself. You know, I, I, I name the deals. If you go back and see, you know, we're, we're, we're doing this stuff, you know, and then you give me a woman. All right? And she's the one that did it. And yes, by biblical, boy, it says she ate first, but Adam didn't have to eat. So we played blame. And here's the deal about sin, folks. You can't blame your sin on something else. All right? You yourself chooses when you're going to sin. We have freedom of choice. And let me put it another way. We don't have to sin as Christians. We choose to sin. And that's what Adam and Eve did. They chose to sin. And Adam, the first thing when he's getting scolded by God, thinks, man, if you hadn't gave me her, I'd, I'd still be in a perfect utopia. And, of course, that, that's not going to fly uh, with God. Verse 12, and the man said, the woman you gave to me, she gave it to me. And the Lord God said to the woman, what is this you have done? And the woman said, the serpent deceived me, and I ate. Doesn't that sound... Just pass the buck. Just pass the buck. All right? It, it's the devil. Uh, the old Flip Wilson, I'm aging myself here. The devil made me do it. No, folks. No. Your flesh made you do it. Okay? It was your flesh. And the blame game. And, and I'll tell you the other thing. Not just the blame game, but people just live in denial. Okay? They are not... There, it's, it, all the dots, the spiritual dots are not connected. So if we, if we don't think something is, then we think we're still okay. And I'll go back to what I said earlier, folks. God's Word never changes. The rules are still the same. The Bible is still the same. God's Word is yesterday and today and forever. Psalm 51. Psalm 51. Psalm 51, verse 3 and 4. And this is David, and he is acknowledging his sin, his transgressions. And we know what he did. He did, you know, you know, two, what I call the big two. 
Okay, he committed adultery, all right, and he murdered. I know he didn't pull the trigger, but he was the one that did that to Uriah. And my sin is always before me against you, and you only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight. You realize, I, I hope you uh, know, David waited one year to confess his sins. And I hope, and I, I really believe he was miserable uh, during that year. When we know we have done something wrong and we don't own up to it, folks, it's not like if I don't think about it, the Holy Spirit will remind us. God will remind us that you may that you may be found just when you speak and blameless when you judge. Let me give you two words. Admit and quit. Folks, it's not good enough just to admit you have sinned. And the quitting part is a word that we're, we're losing this word in, in churches. We're losing this word in spirituality. Repentance. Repentance. God, I'm sorry. God, I was wrong. Please forgive me. Okay? Our sin is our fault, and only we can make it right with God in Jesus. Galatians 6. Galatians 6. Galatians 6, verse 7. The Bible says, Do not be deceived. A great word that you can call Satan is the deceiver. He deceives you. He lies in your face. God is not mocked. Whatever a man sows, he will also reap. I'm amazed at people that go out and live ungodly lives and expect to get away with it. We ought to know, folks, God disciplines his children. He disciplines his children. Why does he discipline us? Because he loves us. All right? My dad never spanked me. <laughs> he whooped me, all right? <laughs> and I didn't get a lot because he was never home. Okay? He worked all the time. But I remember the thing my mom used to say, you know, this hurts me more than you. And I say, well, just quit it. We'll both be happy. All right? I, I was just trying to talk her into that. Folks, I am telling you, I, I promise you, I deserved every whooping I got and got away with some. But I'm simply saying, folks, if you are going to make bad decisions, there are going to be bad results from the decision that you make. Well, I've made my share in my younger years, folks, bad decisions. And my dad, if he told me once, he told me a thousand times, son, what were you thinking? And I always said, I guess I wasn't thinking. And that didn't, that, that started the whooping right there when I said that. All right. Whatever a man sows, he will reap. For he who sows to his flesh will uh, of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap everlasting life. And again, folks, we will be all, we will always, if we are truly saved, we will always be God's children, his sons and his daughters. But I'm telling you, he disciplines us because he loves us. And to close, I wrote down, uh, I, I think this is six or seven things, how to overcome sin in our lives. How to overcome sin in our lives. Number one, quit listening to Satan's lies. Okay? We have to quit listening to to his lies if we are going to overcome sin in our life. The second one, have a meaningful quiet time with Bible reading and prayer every day. Have a meaningful quiet time with Bible reading and prayer every day. The biggest mistake people make in their quiet time is there's either distractions around them or they try to conquer or they read it too fast. If you are reading the Bible, you ought to read. If you're reading a section, you, you, you should read it at least twice. Okay? Nobody, I mean, people can comprehend. But folks, the Bible tells us to meditate on the Word of God. 
Number three, memorize scripture to do battle with Satan's lies. You want to overcome sin? You memorize scripture. First, first scripture, when, when I learned this as a young Christian, I memorized Romans uh, 6, 1 and 2. What shall we say then? Shall I continue to sin that grace may abound? God forbid. Man, when I got to God forbid, I wasn't thinking of that sin anymore. How can I, who am dead to sin, live any longer therein? And if you want to get real specific with it, just put the sin in there. What shall I say? Shall I continue to lust that grace may abound? How am I, who am dead to lust, live any longer therein? Okay? And here's the deal, folks. A person cannot think two thoughts at the same time. So if we are concentrating on the Word of God and that memory is in our bank, in our head, that's what... Is that not what Jesus did when he was tempted in Matthew chapter 4? It is written. And when you're quoting Scripture, but you got to memorize it to quote it, folks. And I've, I've heard a thousand excuses on why I can't memorize Scripture. And I, I will say this, men say it to me more than women do. I just can't memorize. No, you, you don't put the effort to memorize. You know what I have to do? I have to write it on an index card and read it at least four times a day for a solid week. I don't have a photographic memory. But even now, again, I don't even know how many scriptures I have in my head. But why? Because I've been in the ministry 45 years. And I, I, I have these. And, and folks, I'm telling you, this is probably one of the keys to overcoming overcoming sin. Number four, confess and repent immediately when you are under conviction. I heard a preacher say one time, just, ah, you can just do it at the end of the day. Just do it all at once. No, folks, when I am convicted, I need, and again, I'm not talking if you're driving, you know, close your eyes and ask. Folks, I pray all the time when I'm driving, when, when, my, when I'm on my motorcycle, and I'm by myself especially, I pray when I'm on my motorcycle. All right? Confess and repent immediately when you're under conviction. Number five, remove anything in your life that pulls you down spiritually or hurts your walk with God. Now, here's where the rubber hits the road. We can talk, and we can talk, and we can talk. But somewhere, we have to get rid of the thing that is pulling us down. Somewhere. Remove anything in your life that pulls you down spiritually or hurts your walk with God. Matter of fact, I'll tell you the gospel truth. When I got saved, truly saved, the best man in my wedding, just he, he just said, Mike, what? Man, you know, you can go to church. You, you don't have to straighten all up like that. My best friend at my wedding, and within six months, we hardly ever talked to each other. I literally had to walk away from him. And to be honest with you, I think he probably walked away from me more than I walked away from him. Because I told him, I witnessed to him. I told him, man, my life's changed. God has totally changed my life. He just said, man, I, I just, he just kept saying, I can't believe this. I can't believe this. Man, we played golf together. We played softball together. We played basketball together. Okay. Anything, remove anything in your life that pulls you down spiritually or hurts your walk with God. Number uh, six, ask for daily filling of the Holy Spirit. Folks, every day is a new day. Every day. Okay? That's why, that's why I love, you know, the, what, what I've told you a thousand times. Every night, every night, every night, am I right with God? And pause. Give time to think and meditate. God will remind you, okay? Am I right with my family? Okay, was I short with Lori? Did I cut her off or not listen? Or, I mean, God has a whole list sometimes for me on that, okay? And number three, am I right with my fellow man? Is there anyone that I've wronged? Maybe they wronged me first. 
Okay, maybe, and folks, retaliation helps nobody, okay? All right, we need to be the bigger person. Okay, we need to be the bigger person. Father, thank you for this day. And God, I do, Lord, I just want to expose the devil for who he is. He is a liar. He is a liar. And God, I just pray that you help us to understand that sin will hurt us. And God, I pray that we would just get as far away from sin as we can possibly get. And God, I pray that we understand that we are going to die. And God, I, I really, I am not even afraid of death. So God, I pray that you give us and all Christians just the assurance of their salvation, that it's going to be all right. You're going to walk through death. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you're going to be with us. And God, I pray that we would realize that it's not someone else's fault. It's not how we were raised. We got to get past that. We're adults. We can't always look back, and we shouldn't look back much at all because that's already done. That's that's history. God, I pray that we would take, you know, just just fess up, God. I pray that we would just realize that nobody makes a sin. God, it's a choice that we make. So, God, I pray, and I do. I just pray a hedge of protection around us and. God, your people. God, I know Satan. He's he's the out there. He's just waiting. He just wants to pounce on us, and and he wants to just plant just ill thought. God, I I truly believe uh, that that is the basis of, of a lot of the suicide. Satan talked them into it. God, I pray that we would not listen uh, to the lies of the devil. God, thank you for your truth. Thank you for your word. And God, I pray that we would just really do battle with Satan, that we would uh, rise above these things. And God, I pray that we would just do some introspecting. And God, even preparing this message that I wrote Monday, Monday night, I was, I was doing some introspecting. And God, I pray that we would be honest with ourselves and especially honest with you. God, we love you. and. We thank you for all that you're doing, and thank you for the word. God, just uh, be with us uh, this night. Thank you for the Awana program. Thank you for our youth. I thank you for the men's Bible study that's going on uh, even at this time. And God, just thank you that all over this building on a Wednesday night, people are being discipled. People are being taught the word of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.